Bona tarda, des del CSCB, el Centre de Cultura Contemporània de Barcelona. Sigui tothom benvingut aquesta tarda dedicada a Maria Campbell, la gran veu literària indígena del Canadà. Ens haguessin acompanyat, i haguéssim estat molt ben acompanyats, la Marta Marín Dòmine, escriptora i professora, experta en estudis de la memòria i traductora al català del llibre de Maria Campbell, Mestissa. I Xalo Toloza Fernández també hagués estat aquí, performer i director d'escena, coautor de la trilogia escènica Pacífico, que explora la violència sobre els pobles indígenes de Llatinoamèrica. Però per un petit tema de salut, excusen la seva presència, ens demanen disculpes i els asseguro que part de l'esperit de les seves preguntes i les interessants qüestions que haguessin plantejat a la senyora Campbell el recollirem nosaltres també des d'aquí per aquest col·loqui que farem. Aquesta tarda ens convoca una gran autora, una gran personalitat, Maria Campbell. Welcome, Maria Campbell. Thank you so much for joining us. Ella és autora de Mestissa, aquí és, obra fundacional de la literatura indígena del Canadà, que tot just ara ens arriba traduïda per primera vegada al català, per Club Editor i per Castellà, del Castellà per Tránsito. Campbell és autora d'altres llibres, autora de teatre, també dramaturga, cineasta, acadèmica, professora i amb una sòlida trajectòria com a activista pels drets del seu poble i els drets de les dones. La seva feina ha tingut un impacte determinant pel reconeixement i la projecció de la seva comunitat al poble metí. Un poble, una cultura, que llegint aquest llibre hem après el que desconeixíem de ple. Hem de ser sincers, ho desconeixíem de ple. Per això llegiré el postfaci de la seva traductora, la Marta Marín Dòmine, la pàgina 214, perquè sapiguem davant de qui estem, de quina personalitat estem i de quin poble estem. Half-Bred, mestissa, mestissa en anglès, designa, diu Marta Marín Domine, les comunitats nascudes del contacte sovint forçat i violent de les primeres nacions amb els colons europeus. Avui es considera un terme despectiu i es prefereix emprar metí, que significa mescla. Els metí han desenvolupat una cultura pròpia, resultat de la barreja de diversos pobles aborígens, els guabanquis, els algonquins, els menominers, els solter, els cri, els objiues, els nacodes i els dacotes. La Constitució canadenca del 1982 el reconeix com a part dels pobles aborígens, al costat de les primeres nacions i dels inuit. Segons el cens del 2016, la població metí és de 587.545 persones. Doncs la importància d'aquesta autora metí i d'aquest llibre, de la lletra impresa, per esborrar tot el que ens han tatuat les imatges i les narratives de l'home blanc, les que han tingut el poder de crear contingut, estats d'opinió, hegemonies, oblits i menys preus. Jo també he cantat el John Brown era un petit indi, senyores i senyors. Jo també m'he disfressat d'Índia, quan encara no m'havien explicat el malentès sagnant d'aquesta paraula. Jo també, senyores i senyors, he jugat a indis i a cowboys i com a nena em van fer anar al cantó dels febles, dels dolents, dels indis. Jo també m'he empassat acríticament tota la història de la conquesta de l'Oest projectada per Hollywood, sense saber res de l'altra banda, res dels bescantats, res dels humiliats, res dels desposseïts, res dels digníssims amos legítims d'aquelles terres, res que no fos a través de les paraules i de les imatges interessades del colonitzador, de l'home blanc. El perill de la història única, senyores i senyors, que ens ha explicat tan bé l'escriptora nigeriana Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, també des d'aquest mateix escenari del Centre de Cultura Contemporània de Barcelona. El perill de la història única que en la seva llengua té una paraula concreta i tot. Hi ha una paraula de l'idioma Igbo, escriu Adichie, que recordo cada cop que penso en les estructures de poder. És Enkali. Vol dir ser més gran que l'altre. I igual que els nostres mons econòmics i polítics, les històries també es defineixen pel principi d'Enkali. Com s'expliquen, qui les explica, quan s'expliquen i quantes se n'expliquen depèn del poder. El poeta palestí Maurit Adichie, Bargouti, continua a Ditxe, va escriure que si es pretén desposseir un poble, la forma més simple és explicar la seva història i començar per, en segon lloc, si comencem la història amb les fletxes dels pobles nadius americans i no amb l'arribada dels anglesos, o si comencem la història amb el fracàs de l'estat africà i no amb la creació colonial de l'estat africà, 
tindrem una història completament diferent. Aquest llibre, Mestissa, és un llibre important, senyores i senyors, una autobiografia que va molt més enllà de la vida d'una dona metí nascuda l'any 40 a Saskatchewan i que se sobreposa admirablement a la degradació de les condicions de vida que sotmeten al seu poble. Aquest llibre, vital i tristíssim alhora, ens parla del nostre món d'ara mateix. És un llibre que va fer caure la vena dels ulls a molts fa gairebé 50 anys. Va posar veu i diagnòstic a una situació invisibilitzada vergonyosament. A l'horror que és que et facin ser un pari a casa teva, que et prenguin els boscos, les bèsties, les bestioles, els rius, l'aire, que t'arrabassin el teu sistema de vida, que te'l prohibeixin i que et converteixin en un escarràs imposant-te un model de vida, el de l'home blanc, que només és vivible si hi ha unes certes condicions que el puguin fer vivible. Si no, és terrorisme pur, és l'infern. Avui, des d'aquesta Barcelona que encara gosa tenir dret un monument a Cristòfol Colom, des d'aquesta Catalunya que té pendent revisar el seu passat esclavista, des d'un estat espanyol que celebra la seva festa nacional el dia 12 d'octubre com a dia del descobriment d'Amèrica, des d'aquesta Europa blanca que un mal dia va sortir a trinxar les terres i les persones de tot el planeta. Avui és un deure de memòria, un grandíssim honor emocionant que la senyora Maria Campbell ens obri casa seva a Saskatchewan a través de la pantalla, encara que sigui, és important, que hi sigui, i puguem escoltar-li explicar les arrels d'aquest llibre, les moltes branques amb què es va enfilar quan es va editar fa gairebé 47 anys. La situació actual del seu poble també volem sentir-li explicar i com des dels seus ulls savis veu i sent com està bategant aquest món nostre. Rebi de tots nosaltres, que aquí som molt poquets, l'equip tècnic i directiu del Centre de Cultura Contemporània de Barcelona, però rebi d'unes mans que haguessin sigut moltes més si aquest teatre hagués pogut estar ple. Rebi aquest sentit honor que li retem i aquest agraïment per ser avui aquí amb nosaltres. Benvinguda. Gràcies. I, uh, and then ask them, no, I'll be talking to them. Get that ski walk. Mercy, I go high, high into the dawn. I go back to you, get day up, guys. If the guy I had to come with, with that ski walk out, and I go neck, and the damn skawa walk, I put the way we put some good big yoga neck there. It wouldn't just get done, stay my customer. So I want to thank you for inviting me, and I'm really sorry that Marta and, uh, is not able to be here, but uh, I, I hope you get better. And uh, I want to, uh, to thank you for the translation and uh, making, making it possible for my book to be in, 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 in uh, Spain and in Catalan and in other Spanish-speaking Spanish -speaking countries. I'm, I'm a bit nervous. I'm, uh, I'm not really used to Zooming yet, but I, uh, I just wanted to tell you that I spoke my language and I acknowledge the ancestors of, the indigenous ancestors of, of Spain, and in particular, the Barcelona area. And, uh, that's uh, a greeting we always do when we come to a new place. And uh, although I can't be there to, to make my offering of tobacco to the land, I hope that someday I'll be able to do that. And I acknowledge the people who are watching this, this program as well. And, and thank you uh, again for inviting me. Based on the questions that, that were sent to me, I uh, would like to begin by telling you that that uh, Meti or uh, Mestizo, I'm not quite sure how you say it in your language, but I, uh, I wanted to tell you that we are not mixed blood people. Um, it's a mistake that uh, most people, including Canadians, make because they don't know our history or know anything about us. We are the descendants of unions between generations of Métis people. Uh, often people think that mixed blood 
it is what we call ourselves, but that's not so. Um, a mixed blood person for me is when is maybe uh, you know if a, a European man and woman, Indigenous women married today, um, they would be called mixed blood. But uh, uh, for us, that's not true. We were mixed blood maybe 300 years ago, but but we're not that anymore. We uh, come from a distinct people with a uh, language, culture and um, ways of knowing um, uh, to, our, uh, to our land and um, where we, we're, we're unique, we're different from, uh, from both our indigenous uh, family and our European family. Um, we're not the same people, although we, you know, we carry some of the, the some of the things that they they brought to this land and gave us many many uh, decades ago. We're approximately, as as our host said, half a million people in Canada, in our homeland, and I won't get complicated about it because it would take a long time to explain. But our, our homeland is primarily in, in the plains and in the provinces of, of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. And, uh, and we live like anybody else in other parts of our country, but that's what we consider our homeland. We, uh, I would say that half of us live in, in urban centers and, and the other half of us live in, uh, out on the land or in small villages. And um, it's important to, I think, uh, to note this time that in our country, in pre-colonial times, children never belonged to the father. They were, the, they were of their mother's people. And it was in Europe that women and children belonged to fathers, and it was a foreign custom that was imposed on Indigenous people. And my people suffered the consequences of that, uh, of, of that custom. Every, uh, you know, I want to stress that every legislation and policy in the theft of land, the theft of children, the robbing of culture, language, identity, done to First Nations and Inuit peoples, was also done to our people and continues to be done to all of us. Every indignity, brutality that was done to First Nations people and Inuit people continues to be done, was and is also done to us. When somebody wants to discriminate or, or um, whatever in our whole history, they didn't ask us first if we were, if we were Indigenous or if we weren't. They, we look Indigenous, our languages, our culture is based on the land, and so we were treated with all of the same brutalities and, and thefts as any, any, any other Indigenous people, except for one thing, and that was the, the settlements of land. There was never a land settlement that was done with us in our own homeland. Our history is one of struggle to retain our homeland, and after two armed resistances with the Canadian government and our leaders being hanged, imprisoned, and exiled, we were shamed, pushed into the past, made invisible, and forgotten. We rose again, and after decades of negotiations, our leaders were able to have us recognized and included in the Canadian Constitution as one of the three Aboriginal peoples of Canada. But this didn't mean that anything changed for us. We're still a landless people in our homeland, but like other Indigenous peoples in Canada, we have the highest poverty rates, the highest prison rates for both men and women, the highest suicide rates of most of our young people under the age of 30, all the way down to the age of 10, and the highest rates of homelessness. And, and this is rapidly rising, especially during these difficult times of COVID. And I just want to say that homelessness is something that was never a part of our culture, nor were any of these other things, but in the last you know, 300 years, homelessness was not a part of our culture. Landlessness, yes, we didn't have a, a place that we could stay very long, 
But homelessness, as long as, as there were people around, nobody was ever homeless. And so homelessness is probably really only about 50 years old. It's not an old uh, an old thing for us. It's it's something that's very recent. And and a good part of that is as we become, as we 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 integrate more into society, we come into this society that that's something that people don't practice. They don't practice what we call wakutu and where we we look after each other, family takes care of one another, which is what we did before. Whether the person was mentally ill, if they were they were sick, or if they were crippled, or if they were poor, the family took care of each other. And and as we move into urban centers, that's not happening anymore. And so the rate of homelessness becomes more difficult. And part of that is because of the the poverty in cities for for indigenous people. It's very different uh, living out on the land and, and coming to the city because on the land you can still you can still live off of the land, but we're not able to do that in the cities. And so it's always families that get fragmented and, and nobody helps anybody anymore. There are more indigenous children in government funded foster homes hotels and children's prisons in Canada than ever in the history of residential schools in our country. We, uh, we, we lose so many children uh, to, to government and, and, and those, those rates are rising all the time. If anybody is, you know, comes to Canada or they listen to the news, this is something that's, that's in the news a lot. Is, is the, the theft of our children. And I say theft because for many, many mothers, you, you go to the hospital to have a baby and somebody is there to take it away. And, and you have no say in, in, in any of that. And that, that sounds pretty far-fetched, but those are things that still happen. The sterilization of women still happens without their consent. And there are many uh, you know, lawsuits now that are, that are coming up. And the theft and brutal beatings and murderings of women and children has, not, has done nothing except accelerate. There are more now than there ever was before. And there, there has always been you know, a, a history of, of the murder of murdered and missing women in Canada. And also the, the, the murder of indigenous men is something that's, that's uh, I mean, all of that is, is becoming almost epidemic. It's, uh, it's so horrific that, um, and I guess the horror of it is that it's becoming normal and people treat it that way. Settler Canadian th Canadians, settler Canadians, think that we whine and complain for no real reason because they don't see pictures of us lying bombed out and dead all over their television screens. And they can't welcome us as immigrants. And so they, they believe that we're just whining for no reason, that, uh, that everything really is okay and that government gives us too much money. They don't see that the racism and hatred because it's so deeply ingrained in their institutions and way of life, they don't see it. They don't believe that they're racist or that they, that they have hatreds. This is only something that people have started to really talk about since this, this whole thing that's called truth and reconciliation. But prior to that, uh, it was, it, people were blind to that. And uh, when I was a child, we never dreamed about getting an education beyond hoping to be able to read. Many of our people were not allowed to go to school because they were landless people. And in our country, if you didn't pay taxes, you didn't get an education. Even though we were living on our traditional territories in our, in our homeland. Today, things are, are better as far as education. We have young people in universities. We have doctors, we have many lawyers, teachers, professors, entrepreneurs. We have many, many uh, artists. And thanks to parents and young people who gave up so much to make that possible. 
and of course, remembering the many benevolent government and trade school programs who need more skilled and specialized workers to work in the, in the resource taking industries. Whenever you're in a, in a country where resources are being extracted, indigenous people are always pulled in and there are always ways to get them an education so that they can fill those those things, um, those places. But even that is changing because of, of immigration. There's so much immigration. And uh, I guess the last thing that I want to say about that is, is the role of artists in our community. Artists have, uh, you know, storytellers, singers, poets, writers, people in theater. It's, it's those people who have, who have you know, in, in ways like uh, with Half-Breed, been able to bring that story to, to the world. And I think that's true in, in all countries that have been colonized, that um, people are starting to recognize the, the horrors of, of what colonization has done uh, to, to the human soul. And um, I just want to say that we're no different than other people trying to liberate themselves. Some of us sell out, some of us become gatekeepers and protectors for the institutions or the big corporations, the mining extraction and deforesting companies that come with big dollars and bigger promises. But most of us, most of our people, fight for our personal and our people's inherent rights and liberties. For our women, as for all Indigenous women in our country, we have always protected our families, our land and water, our languages and culture, and we have always nurtured and continue to nurture liberation for our people. And, and that hasn't changed. That's a role that women have always played and have, if, if it wasn't for that, we would probably have no language and no culture left. Women have fought really hard for that. And in our country, that was never something that anybody acknowledged. We were really, you know, if I say that our people were, were forgotten and they were invisible, women were even more invisible because that's a European way. Women had no role in, in leadership, even if they did all the work, they were not the people who stepped out and, and took the bows for the work that they did. But that's starting to change. And, and that's changing simply because our people are, are, have gone back to our, our old ways. You'll, you'll see the, the tattoos on my face, that's a part of that. It's reclaiming things that were taken away. And if you think about colonization as, as this, this puzzle, you know, when you finish a puzzle, it's, you put it together in this beautiful picture and then somebody comes along and kicks it throws it up in the air and the pieces fly all over. That was us. So that maybe I'd have three pieces, you'd have two, somebody else would have 10. And we were so isolated from each other and, and with residential schools, with all of the things that missionaries did and, and the way that when people were, were moved about, we, we lost pieces of that and we had to, you know, a lot of that had to be hidden. And, and so the old people who, who kept that, it's like in the last 30 years especially, it's like they've, we've started to put those pieces together. We've come together and, and we're rebuilding that again. And, and, and really nothing is ever lost. We put it down, you know, for, for whatever reason to survive, but it's always there for us to come back and pick up. And, and so those things are, you know, we've reclaimed and it's, it's a role that women have really led in our country. Um, it sounds um, like I speak in the past. Uh, one, of the, one of the statements that uh, the, the other lady who was supposed to be here today said she felt that I was speaking in the past and that there were all these things happening. I think that uh, maybe I sound like I speak from the past. It might be because of my age. It might be because of translation. But believe me, I live in the middle of all of this. And I live in the moment of it all the time, even at my age today. And, and that's true for all of our people. We can't afford to live in the past. 
we have to, if we're going to survive, we have to live in the moment. But we bring that past with us and we're grounded in it and we know our history. It's the only way that we can to try and ensure that this doesn't happen to us again. And I just, the other thing and the last thing I want to say and, and stress is that for every gain that we have, for every time we, we, we have a child that, that graduates from university, for, for each time that one of us can buy a house, for each time that we can do something, we lose many of the lives of our people because of that. And, and when I say that, people think, you know, often our own people, our Canadian people think, well, you know, give me a break, you guys. It's not that bad. It is that bad because the, the, the death of somebody's soul and the taking away of and wounding of people's spirits is not what you can see. Those things are, are hid away and, and people have to struggle with them. But our, our suicide rates, as I said earlier, are really scary. It's not unusual to have five or six suicides anymore in a community, especially in the North, because young people are so demoralized and, and, and have so little hope. And, and it's true with our children that are being taken away. And, and our people, you know, from, from coming through several generations of that, people like myself have to spend a lot of time trying to rebuild and, 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 and to just personally, to find our own personal freedom before we can even begin the work of doing it for our communities. And so I wanted to share that because maybe in the other interview, I sounded like everything was really fine. Nothing is fine. You know, our, our, our forests are being totally cut down. Our, um, you know, our water, many of our communities can't drink their water. It, it's, but, you know, very few of us cry about it. We're very strong and resilient people. And, uh, and, and we, can, we can pick up and keep going. But that was why I wrote Half-Breed. Uh, when I was in my 20s, I just felt like, you know, I felt powerless. I didn't know what to do. I was so angry. And I realized that, that the anger that I was feeling, I was, I was just destroying myself and I couldn't do that anymore. And so I tried to think of ways to to change that. And so I did, I, I made changes in my life. I, uh, I went to work, you know, as a community worker, trying to, to help my, my own people in the city because that's where I was to, 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 to change their, their lives and for us to try and, and rebuild. I did that with a lot of, of people my age and my generation in the 1960s. And, and the very old people in our communities came to help us do that. And, and somehow we were able to, to heal ourselves. And, and I did it, what I found for tools for me, I was able to do theater. I did theater in a bag al back alley with a bag, of, a bag of hats and mustaches and whatever I needed. And, and that was how we could get our own people to listen to us. Nobody wanted to hear us preaching. Nobody wanted to, tell, wanted to hear us tell them to change their lifestyle. So what we do is we just stand in a back alley and tell stories and perform and make up stuff on the spot. We didn't know nothing about theater except the little bit that we had read about. And we were starting to see television and stuff like that. And so it was, it was art and music and looking at our own and, and rediscovering that and, and, and the power that comes and the healing that comes from that is, is unbelievable. So I just wanted to say that because I, I for sure don't ever want to give the impression that everything is just fine today because it is worse than it ever was. You know, having educated people doesn't mean that things change. It takes more than 50 years for people to be really free. Sentint la senyora Campbell, a un se la dona esgarrifat no? de, de l'èxit d'aquest màrqueting polític de, de, del govern del seu país, del president del seu país, Trudeau, que 
aquí a Europa passa per ser un govern civilitzat, exemplar en alguns aspectes. Llegeixo del postfaci de Marta Marín Domine, que parla de la Comissió de la Veritat i Reconciliació del Govern Canadenc, que escriu ella que insta les institucions públiques a reconèixer la part de la història del país i tant en la informació escrita com en la digital i a l'inici dels actes públics a explicar-ho. No sé si es compleix, però si es compleix pel que vostè està explicant, em sembla molt que és un formulisme, un ús del políticament correcte que en el fons amaga el menyspreu de tota la història de la colonització i que m'agradaria saber l'estratègia aquesta d'aquest, no sé si això, aquest màrqueting polític, aquest soft, aquesta soft política, no?, de fer veure que sí, que hi ha una comissió de la veritat i la reconciliació, però no es fa res ni per visibilitzar les primeres nacions, ni per tornar-los a la terra, ni per donar-los les eines que necessitarien per sortir d'aquesta marginalitat. Quina és aquesta veritat que hi ha darrere de la Comissió de Veritat i Reconciliació? O aquesta mentida, m'atreviria a dir. Well, there was certainly no truth in reconciliation for our people. You know, truth in reconciliation was, was for First Nations people, but not for, uh, for uh, many uh, non-status and Métis people. And non-status people are First Nations people who were never given, you know, recognition by government. So, uh, but I don't think that our government is worse than any other colonial government yeah. toward its indigenous people. You know, I'm not going to sit here and badmouth my government, you know, any more than I would the Spanish government or any place else, because uh, that's... No rebem amb prou de qualitat la connexió des del Canadà, des de Saskatchewan, des d'on viu Maria Campbell. Intentem reprendre una connexió que ens permeti continuar tenint aquesta conversa que s'ha aturat en aquest moment de veure quina responsabilitat pren el govern canadenc. Maria Campbell ens comentava que no és pitjor govern que qualsevol altre colonitzador. Això és veritat, que aquesta invisibilització de les minories, de qui ha perdut l'hegemonia inicial és comú a tots els governs. Li volíem demanar això, que darrere aquesta comissió de veritat i reconciliació que hauria de permetre la dignificació de la vida dels pobles de les primeres nacions, què és el que falla, que són moltes de les coses les que deuen fallar, que aquí no ens arriba gens aquesta informació, però pel que sembla part de, o la major part de la gent del Canadà tampoc és conscient del que pateixen les seves comunitats nadiues, els seus veïns. Ah, podem reprendre la conversa. Senyora Campbell, disculpes, ens ha fallat la connexió. Ara la tenim, la tenim de nou, sí. Gràcies, disculpi. Sí. Ens havíem quedat que ens explicava... No, ens explicava... No puc escoltar-te. No, no em sent? Sí, sí que la sentim. Ens explicava, a veure si així reprenem la... Puc escoltar-te, no puc escoltar-te. Perfecte, doncs reprenem... Puc escoltar-me? Sí, sí. Que ens explicava que no és pitjor el seu govern que qualsevol de qualsevol poble colonitzador, no? Ens deia això perquè entenguem que no hi posen remei. 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 You know, so I, I just wanted to say that uh, change, change, change is going to come and governments are going to have to accept that. Change comes from people. And, and one day we'll have, uh, we'll have governments that will, that will uh, be more open to those things and more understanding. And, uh, you know, I think uh, COVID is a part of that that um, people start to realize that you can't destroy the earth without something happening. And, uh, and hopefully that gives us time to do a lot of reflection. 
but um, I, you know, I uh, so I just wanted to say that it's this government is no worse than the government before. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just like in theater, we take one mask off and we put another one on. And um, but it's true in in all colonial countries, and it has to change all over. I la lluita de l'activisme ara mateix de, de, del seu poble, per on passa? On és que està incidint més en la visibilització, en penetrar en la ficció, en el teatre, en els mitjans, en, en tenir veu pública? Quin, quin és la, el, allà on estan apuntant més la banya per, per intentar trencar totes aquestes barreres que, que els invisibilitzen i que, i que amaguen tota l'opressió? I think that for for always our people have 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 struggled to to make change and and leadership has come forward and we've tried different things but I I when our leader our leader was hanged 100 and some years ago when that happened one of the things that he said was that that someday it would change and it would be artists who would lead And I, and I really believe that because when people's souls are hurting, you know, uh, it, it's, it's music, it's stories, it's, it's dance, it's all of those powerful, gentle things that, that bring people back together. And it's, it's how people can communicate with each other. You know, um, if I can communicate with, with Spain, maybe it will look at its own role in, in colonization because certainly the role of, of women and the way that indigenous women were treated is a direct result of how women were treated in Europe. And, and you know, I only need to look at burning times to, to know that, you know, uh, and, and I said that in the other interview, it was, it was very liberating for me to find out that they didn't come here to do that to me just because I was indigenous they were doing that to their own women and and there was there was a, a freedom in that and i wouldn't have learned that if i hadn't been reading or if i hadn't been looking at plays or you know so people educate each other and 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 it's people like us that that make change uh, unfortunately people are always more open to that this kind of of critical dialogue outside of their own country. Like people will listen to me outside, but they're not wanting to hear it because they don't believe themselves to be like that. And I don't think that Spain is too much different probably, you know, than England or anybody else. No country likes to be, to have a, a critical analysis done of them. Sí, you tota know, la raó. Need, yeah. Aquí aquest, per exemple, aquest juriol, es va donar la paradoxa no? que molta gent eh, d'aquí, de, de, de Barcelona, no? van sortir a la plaça Sant Jaume, a la plaça de la Generalitat i de l'Ajuntament, eh, en solidaritat amb el moviment Black Lives Matter, però en solidaritat als temporers eh, d'origen mm -hmm. africà que estaven malvivint als carrers de, de la nostra part del país mm -hmm. on hi ha pagesia, no? de, la, de la zona de, del Segrià de Lleida, no hi havia aquesta consciència que també eren Black Lives Matter que també importaven. Vull dir que ha dit una, una gran veritat, no? És molt més fàcil sentir que hi ha altres llocs on hi ha opressió que no sentir i sentir el dolor que tu formes part d'aquest sistema opressor. Nosaltres aquí en formem part. El nostre, el nostre modus vivendi, la nostra, el nostre privilegi de tenir un sostre, de tenir un pa assegurat, es basa en l'explotació dels altres pobles d'arreu del món. I això és un dit a l'ull que no ens volem posar. Jo era una cosa que li volia preguntar, no? que individualment em preocupa molt i cada cop veig que hi ha més gent, per sort, que comença a tenir aquesta inquietud. Què podem fer al marge de llegir llibres com el seu, d'informar-nos, d'empatitzar. Eh, quina és aquesta pedra que hem de llançar per trencar aquest vidre invisible no? que, ens, que ens protegeix i ens fa veure documentals, ens fa, ens fa sentir entrevistes, però després marxem a casa i, i ja està, i demà és un altre dia. No? Quin és l'altre pas? que obligatòriament hauríem de fer com a beneficiaris i copartíceps de la situació del seu, del seu poble, però de tants altres pobles d'arreu del món.
I think the most important step is looking around you in, in your own in your own city, in your own territory, and how have how have people who are different been treated? You know, and, and, and what is your what is your history? Where did your people come from? How were you know, did they immigrate there a thousand years ago or 500 years ago? You know, and why did they, did they come there? You know, uh, and, and, and before, there were, before there were black people there, there were gypsies there. There were all kinds of people who are, who've always, there's always been dominance over. And, and, and what often happens is that the colonizer or the colonized becomes the the colonizer. We don't learn from other histories yeah. that we come from. I look at uh, our own country. The people who were, who left their country because they were colonized came here to find a better life. Didn't wouldn't even look at us, and they were they left their country because they were treated like that. You know, uh, I think that one of the most important things that I've come to realize at my age is that we don't think about our children. In, in our culture, you know, we, we believe in circles. Mm -hmm. and, and the very center of our circle is our children. And everything that we do, the way that we talk to each other, the way we treat each other, we do that to the seven generations ahead of us. And, and if my children are treated like that by you, you're also treating your children the same way because they're going to inherit that. That's the inheritance we leave. The, the hatreds that we carry in our, in our lives today is what we inherited from seven generations back. And, and so if we, if we think about our children and put them in the middle and say, it's a better world that I wanna make for you, it, it changes your perspective and the way that you that you look at, at who, who, who the, the human being is that's, that's, that's there. And I know that that, doesn't, that sounds pretty gentle and soft, but some of the most powerful and strongest things are the most gentlest things. No change, that's where change comes from. And if we can't do that for our children and, and for future, for our great-grandchildren, then why, why bother? You know, we might as well burn up because that's what's going to happen to us. Tornem al llibre, perquè aquest llibre eh, també ens, ens ajuda a parlar del que ha comentat vostè en més d'una ocasió, i és aquesta lluita de les dones, aquest, aquest poder, aquesta força. Aquest llibre també és un llibre de personatges inoblidables, i un personatge inoblidable que ja li han dit moltíssimes vegades, segurament, és Chichum, la seva, no sé si ho pronuncio bé, la seva besàvia aquesta persona profundament sàvia que voldries haver conegut, voldries haver tingut de guia també al teu costat i, i, i que ens expressa el que vostè deia, si no hagués estat per la força d'aquestes dones, segurament la parla, les històries, no? la manera d'explicar el món s'hauria perdut i els artistes com vostè no haurien pogut escriure això ni crear eh, art contemporani, teatre, literatura. Més enllà d'aquest personatge que que m'agradaria que ens en parlés una mica perquè segur que atreu a tothom que es llegeix Mestissa. A la pàgina 177 de la traducció en català eh, llegeixo que hi ha el personatge de Maria Campbell, la narradora, al costat d'una altra dona, i diu aquí estem totes dues, idèntiques a tantes dones. Què ens ha passat? Per què hem de lluitar tant per aconseguir tan poc? Aquest clau, no? De, no és proporcional la contribució de les dones amb el retorn no? que, que acaben obtenint, però aquest llibre també és un llibre de solidaritat i de, i de llegat a través de les dones. I, i és un homenatge a, a aquesta Chichum, que no sé si pronuncio bé, però que m'agradaria que ens en parlés perquè és, és, un, és un personatge, és el pal de paller d'aquesta novel·la, em fa l'efecte. Well, she was pretty special, a pretty special woman. Uh, I, uh, I um, she, she never leaves me. She's always around. She's, she's, she was quite a bossy woman, so she makes sure that I pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true of, of, of most indigenous women. They're, they're, um, 
you know, culturally it's, and for those of us who've, who've gone to reclaim those things that were, were taken away from us, that's when you start to think of the children in the middle, you, you become a different kind of person. And, and I think that that's what our old ladies were a long time ago, our old great grandmothers. That, uh, you know, they had no, in our language, we say no ax to grind. <laughs> they, they had no reason to be angry at yeah. outside. Their job was to protect the children, to speak for the children and, and to speak in a strong way and to pass on those, those things and, and so that we would survive. And, and certainly my great grandmother was one of those people. She was very fierce, but she was also a very gentle person. And she, uh, she never forgot, you know, the, the history of our people. And she made sure that we, we knew that as, as children. And, and that, that, I think, if I didn't pass anything else on to my own children, I think I, I passed that on to them and, and to my great-grandchildren. Algunes escenes d'aquestes memòries que es llegeixen com una novel·la, hi ha aquest punt de fricció a vegades amb aquesta àvia amb tanta personalitat, però que té una neta que li és digna, també amb aquesta personalitat. I moltes vegades d'aquestes escenes entranyables sorgeix un sentit de l'humor fantàstic. De fet, li he sentit dir que som un poble resilient perquè tenim sentit de l'humor. I realment aquest llibre, vostè abans ens ha fet a l'inici el diagnòstic realista de la situació vergonyant per qui se sent part de l'altra banda i tremendament injusta, però que hi ha una part de vida alegre que vostè ha conegut del seu poble, amb sentit de l'humor, amb els balls, la música. Aquest llibre també té molta música, té molta vida, té molta alegria. I llavors suposo que això també és aquesta part dolorosa, però que deu brollar amb aquest art del seu poble, aquests artistes d'ara que estan podent agafar aquesta alegria, aquest sentit de l'humor, la força de la cultura, que és la música, els balls, les xerrades al voltant d'una foguera. És aquesta força també del sentit de l'humor i de la cultura que ara ens ve a través del que estan fent els artistes del seu país. Sí, jo realment... I'm, I'm really, uh, I've been so, uh, so uh, thrilled with, uh, with uh, the response and, and, the, and just the dialogue I've had with, with the little bit of interviews I've done with, with uh, your country. Because you're able, you've been able to see what, our, what Canadians don't always see in the book. Often people think of it as a really sad, sad book. It's not a book about sadness for me. It was a book of great joy because I found what I had started to throw away, I was able to find and, 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 and to rejoice in, in what I was able to, to find and, and, and bring back for myself. And, uh, and so I, ne I never think of that as a book of, of shame or a, or a book of, uh, of joy or, I mean, of sadness. I think of it as, uh, as it's the strength of my people you know, being able to tell those stories. And, and, I, and I also, my great-grandmother was a, a, a believer in that, in a circle, when there's a circle, one side is dark, hmm? the other side is light. light. And there's no such thing as, uh, as a bad experience. Yeah. There's always a reason why that comes to you. That's a teacher and you... So if it's, if it's dark, then flip it over and see what's on the other side. My grandmother believed that, my chichim believed that we had to be responsible for our choices. She, she never let us off the hook. You couldn't just cry and say, well, it was because the colonizer did that to me. That's not enough because we, have, we were given, creator gave us what we call in our language, Mamtanechika, and we were given we were given the ability to make choices for ourselves. And, and, and we, no matter how bad things are, we have to try and be strong enough to do that. And, and knowing our own stories and our own songs 
our own our own precious things is what gives us the strength to do that and um, and and to learn from those things that doesn't let you know uh, colonialism off the hook but it certainly makes me stronger yeah. i'm no i'm not a victim then and if you're not a victim it's really hard for people to do that to you també aquest llibre que que té 47 anys i que ara per primera vegada, torno a repetir, tenim en català i també en castellà, també és una guia per ara, per aquest 2020, a les acaballes del 2020, quan estem descobrint aquesta pandèmia que ens posa contra les cordes del planeta que hem contribuït activament a destruir, Aquí veiem com érem, no?, quan totes les comunitats, totes, també aquí a Europa, a la vella Europa, teníem una relació directa i connectada amb la terra. Era allò menjar poc i pair bé, no calia tenir una actitud extractiva de la pròpia natura, es podia caçar, es podia pescar, es podia tenir una relació respectuosa amb la mort i la vida de la pròpia natura. I és un llibre que també ens ensenya el que no hem sabut veure, el que no hem volgut veure, aquesta saviesa que teníem i que pobles com el seu encara conserva. I nosaltres, estúpids, hem abandonat, hem perdut i fins aquí hem arribat. I ara molts estem intentant descobrir la bondat d'abraçar un arbre. A vegades ens ridiculitzem a nosaltres mateixos descobrint els arbres. I és la tristor de tot el que hem perdut i tot el que aquí ensenya tot el que vam perdre amb aquesta destralada de tot el planeta i que el seu poble conserva perfecte en la memòria. Jo crec que els nostres pobles, els nostres pobles, ens ensenyen sobre la memòria i el sang. Si vam anar a la terra, no és que tu ets, si vam anar a la terra i vam obrir la terra a ell, And especially during times like this, when, you're, when you have to think, you're forced to think about what is wrong, what is happening. Those memories are there for all of us. You know, we're, we're, all, we're all human beings, even if some of us are a long way from that, from that place where the, the grandmother is, that, that land of the earth. You know, um, it doesn't take long to go back there and, and, and to, to recognize that we need it, we need everything. You know, the, that, that money, it doesn't matter how much money we have, it's not going to change what, what's happening to us if we get sick. And it's the same with climate change. It doesn't matter how much money we have or how big a corporation we are. If we don't recognize that that earth is our mother and, and, and start to look after it and, and each other, that um, money isn't going to save us. So uh, it, it's not like anybody has the monopoly on, 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 on culture, on spirituality. It's, it's, all, it's there for all of us. All we have to do is, is go there. Abans no he dit, i perdoneu-me, que podíeu adreçar les preguntes que volguéssiu a la senyora Campbell a través de, del, del xat del YouTube. Mirarem a veure si alguns de vosaltres ens heu fet preguntes per ella i amablement li faríem arribar i ens la podria contestar. De moment no, em diuen. Doncs si algú que ens està seguint penseu que potser no teniu moltes oportunitats de tenir algú com la senyora Campbell davant vostre perquè us pugui respondre o fer algun comentari. És un dia molt privilegiat el que estem vivint avui. Per tant... Preguntes no, però potser algun reconeixement sí, perquè potser no en tindreu més l'oportunitat. És una sort avui compartir aquest moment amb una personalitat com ella. Deixant una mica de marge, si algú s'atreveix a fer algun comentari, jo m'agradaria només dir-li, senyora Campbell, que tenia apuntades moltes coses, però que escoltar-la i no quedar-me sense veu m'ha estat una mica difícil perquè moltes coses importants, les que vostè deia i les que necessito també integrar i pensar i aprendre. Però si ens hem deixat alguna cosa que a través del llibre 
vostè cregui que sigui important de comentar avui aquesta tarda, la podem comentar, perquè segurament ens hem deixat moltes coses. No puc pensar de res a la mà. It's quite noisy here because of all the snow. Ah, està nadant. We have so much snow and all of the blowers that are cleaning the things are going by. So it's quite distracting. Can you hear it? No, nosaltres estem consagrats a vostè. No, no sentim res més. No, no. Aquí, perquè vegi, és un teatre bastant bonic i està totalment en silenci, pràcticament a les fosques. És com si estiguéssim assistint a una mica de ritual, d'escoltar-la amb tot l'honor. Aquí no hi ha cap distracció que ens faci fugir de les seves paraules i dels seus pensaments, la veritat. Gràcies. No, I have no questions. I probably will wish I had asked questions, but I can't think of anything. Mira, sí que ens faran arribar una pregunta. A veure. Li llegiré. Sí, molt interessant. És la Maria Junyent i ens diu, senyora Campbell, m'agradaria saber quines van ser les reaccions del seu entorn quan es va publicar el llibre Mestissa. La meva comunitat, a través del país, va ser molt supportiva. Estava, en realitat, molt desesperada because I was very afraid. I thought that people would be very angry. <laughs> but my own people, indigenous people, uh, were, were there and, and, and uh, I, I've never doubted their support. But a lot of uh, non-indigenous people were very angry and especially in the area where I come from. You know, uh, I was called a liar. I, um, you know, that, that things were not that bad. Um, all of a sudden, people who never even saw us knew my history, you know, knew about my family, but they didn't know anything. I, you know, most of them, I didn't even know who they were because they had never acknowledged us when we were growing up and living in that community. But, um, but most of the time, from, uh, you know, from settler people, la resposta ha estat sempre bona. Ho he fet... Ho he fet en la història era portar a la gent a la meva vida. Ho he fet per a que ho puguin veure. Per a ajudar-los a entendre què era com era per a nosaltres. Pensant que, perquè no sabia què més fer. Estava tan... Estava tan... Like I said, I was so powerless. And, uh, and writing about all of my anger and, and where it came from, I wasn't even sure what I was doing. I was just writing. And when I started writing, I was doing it like this because I, I didn't know how to type. <laughs> and I didn't have a typewriter. But, um, and remember, it was almost about 2,000 pages, 2,200 pages. And they were all edited out, so a lot of things were lost. Some of it I got rid of, and some of it the editors got rid of. And that, that was okay, because a lot of it I didn't want really to... I just got it off my chest. But I, what I wanted to do was to talk to you. I didn't want to talk to the world. I wanted to talk to you, whoever you were reading the book, simply because I remembered as a child how books talked to me and how I learned about about the world and about other people through reading a book. And, and that, was, that was what I wanted to do. To, and I say that in there, I wanted to tell you what it was like and what it's still like. You know, um, a lot of my thoughts have changed. You know, everybody changes and yeah. grows. And, and in our language, uh, truth, we say tapuewen. And, uh, and tapuewen doesn't mean truth in the same way because what's true 
today is not necessarily <laughs> going to be true tomorrow. But in Western ways, truth is like a big box of cement. <laughs> you can't, it's there forever. And, uh, and so it's, it's uh, yeah, it, but I feel good. I'm, I've, I've felt good. Sometimes I'm a, I'm a bit, uh, you know, I think what, you know, this is 47 years later, what's going to happen now when people read it? Because I had never intentions to rewrite about my life again. I've been asked to write what happened since then. And that's, that's not important because we know that at least my own people know. We all know what we've been doing. And, uh, and there are much younger writers that have, you know, as many, if not more powerful things to say about their community. But I... Uh, I think I did what I wanted to do, and and I'm, and I'm I'm really uh, grateful that that the book is as important today as it was back then, because it's not about this, it's not it wasn't a story about me. It was a story about our people, and our community. I ara avui en dia a uh, al Canadà quin quin és la presència quin és el lloc que ocupa aquest llibre. 47 anys després de la seva publicació. The book has always been used in universities. Okay. It's never been out of print. It's always, uh, you know, I thought that maybe it would only last for two or three years, but it's been in schools and universities for 47 years. So, uh, and, and what this republication, because I republished because there was a, a section in the book that had been taken out and it wasn't supposed to be, and, and that was the rape. And I wanted, I always wanted that to be put back in, but I, I had given up on that eh? until that young woman found it in, in, the, in the archive. And when, when she found it, and my publisher, who was the same publisher who did this, but not I mean, the, the, the publisher himself had passed away. And the young publisher, the new publisher, phoned me and said, uh, you know, uh, contacted me and said, uh, we would republish that and, and put those pages back in. I said that I would, because that publisher was very good to me. You know, I can't, they took that out, but those were the times. And, and I understand, and I, when I think of it, maybe my, my family would have been really in a lot of danger. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what would have happened. But uh, when we talk about reconciliation, that was, you know, for me, conciliation, uh, the publisher put things to right. They, you know, another publisher made that decision, and he made the decision to republish it. Al uh, que comentara... So, uh, Perdón només per qui no se l'hagi llegit encara, eh, comenta que la senyora Campbell hi ha una part del llibre en què ella, ella explica com la policia muntada del Canadà, dos agents, irrompen a casa seva i perpetren un atac, un, un atemptat contra la seva persona, que és una violació, i, i com això va ser tret, va ser censurat de la primera versió. I, i que ella, doncs, eh, en la republicació del llibre, va, va voler que que finalment hi fos per aquesta reconciliació i aquesta, aquest, les, la cara descoberta. Qui comet els actes d'Estat eh, s'ha de dir i ha de quedar publicat i difós, per, perquè en el fons és, és, és determinant no? de, d'aquest Estat que va contra d'aquestes persones. Per tant, aquest llibre ja, quan ens ha arribat a nosaltres no ens ha arribat amputat i això és una, una, una gran notícia. It's also uh, it's also something that's still happening today. Sí. And and I I wanted people to to talk about it, to have a conversation about it, to you know, to know that this is not something that just happens once in a every 50 years or something. It's it's not an uncommon thing and and that the the police the the people who are there to protect us are no different than other people racism and, and all of that stuff is, is so institutional that, you know, um, just changing, you know, putting more Indigenous people on the police forces, those things don't change anything. 
it's those institutions that have to be changed. And I'm not saying that we don't need police. You know, we, even in our cultures, in olden cultures, we had protectors that looked after the people to make sure that, that you know, if, if that's why we had laws, everybody, all, everybody had laws. But that it was important that we, we'd be able to think about those things. Sens dubte és importantíssim acarar-ho. Una altra pregunta. Ens pregunta la Mariona Gavarró que com definiria vostè els valors de la seva cultura? Que quines són les prioritats de la seva cultura? I, clar, això em donaria per una altra sessió les moltes diferències que segur que, que hi ha amb la cultura occidental. D'entrada ens, ens ha explicat una cosa que, que a mi m'havia cridat molt l'atenció quan li havia llegit, que és allò de que vostè va voler estudiar com és que l'home blanc ha arribat aquí amb aquest comportament tan violent i va, va veure que venia del comportament ja violent contra, el, contra les dones, contra la canalla que ja tenia a Europa. Per tant, és important posar el focus en l'agressor i no en qui es troba pel camí. No? Vull dir que aquesta ja seria una primera diferència de valors que vostè amb l'estudi de, de qui és aquest enemic i, i per què es comporta així va detectar. Però ens preguntava això, les prioritats i els valors que mm, resumiria de, de la seva cultura. Molt bé. Sé que en la nostra cultura no hi havia la violència contra les dones i les dones, com like, la like veiem avui. And, and when I talk about colonization, I want to make it really clear that the Christian church has played a big, big yeah. role in, in that. That's, that they carry that, that's their baggage. That's, that belongs to both the Catholic and the Protestant churches, uh, the way that women and children were treated. I don't know beyond that. I know that, uh, you know, all peoples had, had a, a, a spiritual belief And, and then Christianity came and, and it seems like it travels, you know, uh, we always say that uh, white men came with whiskey in one hand and the Bible in the other, you know, and, and they did that in, in all countries in the world. But the, 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 the hatred that, that the church had for women and, and, you know, I don't know where that comes from, that misogyny. But that's, that's what they came with. And, and for me, that's the biggest difference. I received a fellowship and studied, did research for three years because I thought, well, maybe it's us. Maybe we were violent people. But in our own spiritual teachings, there's no, you know, it, everything. It doesn't mean that we didn't have violence because you wouldn't have laws if there was no violence. But it wasn't a part of our culture. There was There were mechanisms in place to make sure that those things didn't happen. And I wanted to, to research that. I wanted to find out where did it come from then if it wasn't ours. And that was when I started to do all of the research. And, and one of the, the groups of people who really helped me understand that were the Jesuits. You know, the history of, of the Jesuits and, and their, their time here and, and their recordings of, of of it and, and just the way that they, they observed people. And, you know, it was very hard to read because they were so racist, but it was, it was enlightening to find out that, you know, because the other thing they did is they also described what they saw. They were very meticulous in recording what these people were like. And they talk about, you know, the, the the you know the the equality between men and women and 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 how, and how people love their children and 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 that uh, you know violence they were a non-violent people that's all the way through their their writings so i think for me the biggest the biggest difference is is the violence and and for me the violence i've always seen through the church and the church is able to convince itself that they're not violent, that it's not a violent institution. They talk about love and everything, but it's such a patriarchal, hard, cruel religion that, um, and its history is full of cruelty, you know, to, uh, to anybody who they believe is different. 
and without any any question, you know. Um, that doesn't mean that the people that many people I, that I've met are, are not good people, you know, uh, because they're Christians. But but it's that's the only that's the places where I found it was in 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 those religions. And still, you still see those still see them making those kinds of divisions within the community. They separate families just by, by the way that, that they convince you that you're better than your brother or your sister. I faríem l'última pregunta, senyora Campbell. Um, ens demana la Marta uh, si vostè va escriure originalment aquest llibre en anglès i si vostè conserva la seva llengua uh, materna encara. Yes, I do. I actually speak four sí. indigenous languages. Okay. I'm uh, I uh, but no, we we were never a written we never had a language written like yeah. you do. Our ours was different. It was in pictographs and petroglyphs and and things like that in art. Um our, our language is written today because somebody developed a, a way to do that. But um, and, and no, I didn't write in my language. I, uh, I thought in my language, and I mm -hmm. still do. You know, you translate, uh, you have to translate into English. Well, in my head <laughs> when I'm working, there are many times that I have to go to that place and Otherwise, I start to see things from a Western way. I have to remember where I'm grounded and remind myself of that. And, and especially when I'm writing or when I'm, uh, I'm doing theater or I'm doing film, I have to make sure that the lens I'm looking through is my own. Because it's very easy with technology to become, you know, to be really influenced by a, a Western way of thinking. Don's and then... The cultural way is a very feminine way. It's not a masculine way. Doncs potser ja posem punt i final en aquesta xerrada. Uh, ha estat un honor sentir-la, uh, aprendre sobretot. I ara jo crec que s'imposa el silenci i la lectura d'aquest llibre, que per sort amb una mica de retard, però finalment tenim en català i en castellà. Per tant, podem tenir una mica dels seus pensaments, de, de la seva experiència i, i d'aquest eh, testimoni mm, que ens ha estat negat, la veu, l'experiència, la història. Eh, llegir aquest llibre és no tenir excusa per mirar aquesta altra banda que, com deia al principi, ens han escatimat i, per tant, ens han ensenyat a mirar el món i a mirar cap a l'altra banda de l'Atlàntic d'una manera totalment esbiaixada, que amb aquest llibre podríem començar a clarificar una mica. Moltíssimes gràcies a tots els que ens heu seguit i moltíssimes gràcies, senyora Campbell. Ha estat un honor grandiós per nosaltres que ens obrís la finestra d'aquesta casa està protegida de la neu, però que mentre ha caigut la neu nosaltres hem pogut acollir amb tota la calidesa que hem pogut a transmetre-li a través de la pantalla l'agraïment per ser avui aquí a, a través d'aquesta finestreta amb nosaltres aquí a Barcelona. Moltíssimes gràcies. Un honor. Gràcies a tothom. Podreu veure aquesta conversa, si voleu, penjada a la web del CCCB. I moltíssimes gràcies. Ha estat un honor poder conduir aquesta gran dona i aquesta gran artista uh, per tots vosaltres. Moltes gràcies.